when you say i will start home okay so uh, good evening all uh, thank you for uh, joining uh, today evening uh, on, the, on on a weekend so today we have uh, dr alok da from 1969 batch who will be talking about his journey in this uh, adda title uh, the white coat and we as a moderator we have one of his batchmates dr uh, budadev da uh, so he will be acting as a moderator uh, today we actually got a very sad news of passing away of one of our alumni members of 1994 batch uh, dr sandeepan bhattacharya da so before uh, starting the session we will actually uh, take one minute uh, to pray for his the departed so so uh, we will uh, take a silence we will maintain silence for next 60 second and then we will resume our normal proceedings Uh, so uh, let's uh, start uh, let's pray for the uh, family and uh, in, for in the memory of sandeepan bhattacharya the pranam dada buddha devda pranam okay, so uh, now now uh, i think uh, we can start our proceedings uh, so i would request buddha devda to uh, start the moderation uh, uh, and by introducing uh, alok so uh, buddha devda you can unmute yourself you are not audible you are uh, yes Are we audible now? Ha yes now you are audible. So can I start? Should I start? Yes please start. Good evening very good evening to all brothers of Vidyapit Deogar and and all the alumni of Ramkrishna Mission Culture. Today that is 15th of October 2023 is an unique day a red letter day of my life today i have been propelled by the isro scientists alias vidyavid praktani towards sun that is alok gopal ghoshal but i am feeling like aditya l1 because i know i cannot go near sun so i have to strike a balance and bask in the glory of my dear friend my classmate professor alok gopal ghoshal by maintaining a safe distance going through his struggles for the benefit of humanity his academic achievements i feel like he has embedded the essence of ramkrishna mission culture that is uttishtata jagrata prapo varana nibodata arise awake and stop not till the goal is reached achieved he has a lot his academic journey is intimately associated with the formation and growth of association of chest physicians he has become a path blazer definitely with the blessings of holy trio thakur ramkrishna sarada ma and swami vivekananda the guidance and all round development that we have received in vidyapeet must have gone a long way in shaping him as he is today professor alok gopal ghoshal is mbbs md dnb fccp fica fellow of icas and and ex who fellow He is a pulmonologist, a medical director of National Allergy Asthma Bronchitis Institute, stationed in Calcutta. He has more than forty years of clinical and teaching experience as professor and head head of respiratory medicine. He is a researcher and research guide. He nurtured the stream of chest medicine from its infancy 
which presents super speciality status in Bengal and in India. What an achievement. A revered teacher, academician, and researcher, he has illustrious students across the globe. But the most he is known as a master clinician, and we all vouch for him. He specializes in obstructive airway diseases, diffuse parenchymal lung disease, tuberculosis, and sleep. He has devised a bedside lung function instrument called Respress. He has got 225 publications in national and international journals and textbooks. He has contributed chapters to textbooks, such as API Medicine Update, Textbook of Respiratory Medicine, which are in itself an achievement. He has received Lifetime Achievement Award from IAA Con 2016, NAPCON 2016, Indian Chess Society. He, uh, he has uh, received Economic Times Inspiring Pulmonologist of India Award in 2019, He's the founder secretary of Association of Chest Physicians West Bengal. Just imagine, a founder editor of Bulletin of Chest Physicians West Bengal. He's a Chest 2000 nominee of Governor's Community Service Awards. He, he has been the organizing secretary, National Conference on Pulmonology in 2005. He, he has chaired scientific session in NAPCON 2015, and he was organizing secretary as chairperson in NAPCON 2017. He has delivered ICS Silver Jubilee Oration in NAPCON 2007, 2007 and Dr. S.N. Tripathi Honor Lecture Oration in NAPCON 2014. But dear Alok, you must have delivered lectures in various national and international platforms, a glimpse of which I have just uh, enumerated. But today evening is a platform where you are a friend, philosopher and guide to us where we, the Praktanis, are eagerly waiting for your guidance as a Praktani brother, as an educationist, and last but not the, not the least, as a pulmonologist. Now, please take my bow and take the stage as well. Thank you. So, thank you. Am I audible, Satya? Yes, yes, you are audible. So, so basically, Buddha has said a lot of things about me. I am a pulmonologist. And I can share my experiences over the years. This is Adda, as I have been promised, that this is an Adda. So I will share some stories with you. And no extra information or can anything like that. Let's start with the story. I'll try to be the third person. I just see now a doctor in his just attained 50 years of age. He was trying to have his lunch in Calcutta suburb. Sunday was his favorite day because on a grueling workload, 24 into 7, for constant, he used to go to his residential home on Sunday morning. His mother was there, a big family all together. Father has expired few years back. As he was going to take his favorite lunch. Mother used to prepare for him special dishes of alu posto, begun bhaja and khasid mangsho. There was a south outside. I just give him a name, Tirtho. Let us have a name of Tirtho. So Tirtho peeped from the third floor balcony and tried to get inside but he was caught. An elderly gentleman with a dark complexion was shouting, Where is this fellow, Tirtho? And his next brother quipped, It is the cool uncle. Poyla ka question. Cool uncle. Nothing doing. Tirtho had to leave his lunch and get down. The gentleman was shouting at his stop. And Tirtho recognized, Well, this gentleman came to me in the morning also. What happened? In the morning when Tito just 
going to his residential home in the suburb and having a cup of tea. This elderly gentleman again had come that time and was shouting again in a very unpleasant voice, who is Tirtha? Tirtha meekly said, yes, me Tirtha, have you passed MBBS? Tirtha just answered, yes. Okay, just go to my residence, see my daughter. It's nothing, I know. It is just a low-grade fever. But again, her mother wants that a doctor should see him. So see her, just go and see her. Okay, I said, but I don't know where is your residence. He was very grudgingly astonished. Hmm? I am the biggest, he was the biggest coal distributor in the whole area. But again, in spotless dhoti and Punjabi, white dhoti and Punjabi. I am the biggest coal distributor here. Everybody knows my residence. Go to Siptala and ask anybody. Hello, are you accompanying me? No, I am busy. I am going on business deal. You just go and see her. Okay. And then he added, I am your late father's friend. Can't do anything, late father's friend. So I went there. A small house. Not very well kept. I entered and introduced, it's not, again, Tirtho, introduced that this is Dr. Tirtho and has been asked by Mr. that to see that daughter. Very uninviting attitude and there was something missing and from here the story starts. All my knowledge of medicine hinges on this. Something missing. It's a detective story every time. So, what did Tirtha do? Well, who is ill? It was about a 17 or 18 years girl. So emaciated that she was looking like, say, 13. Bedridden almost. So, Tirtha asked her, okay, what is your complaint? Now again, the story starts. What I mean? This is a delicate thing for every doctor to know the story. And I'll come to this in detail later, how the story unfolds. But here what happened, before the girl answered, the mother answered, she is having just some low-grade fever for few days. Okay, how long? It was ultimately revealed that she is having low-grade fever for three months. And every time the girl wanted to answer, the mother intervened and the mother was giving the answers very rudely. Something missing, something missing. Then Tito suddenly asked the girl, how many siblings are you? The girl said three. The mother interrupted rudely, two. What is this? My elder daughter is married to a very wealthy real estate agent in Kolkata and she is my youngest daughter. But why did the girl say three? Then Tito came to know there was one recent death in the family. One of the sisters in the middle had died six months back due to unknown disease, unknown circumstances. Just Tito asked what was the diagnosis of that girl who demised. The lady was furious she said, you see, this is the lunch time for us. And so it was not lunch time actually. It was something around 10 in the morning. So lunch time for us. And don't disturb us anymore. You may go. Tito said, I can't go right now. I have brought a prescription pad with me. So I'll write here and I'll hand it over to you and I'll go. So Tito wrote there the name age, the date, the time, and the circumstances that basically it's a low grade fever with cause, cross emancipation over the last three months, etc, etc. And then just out of duty, he, he asked the mother to come outside, please come outside with me. And then Tito said, you see, I suspect very serious, something very serious. 
this girl is probably suffering from tuberculosis. And we don't know the cause of death of the elder sister either. So please have some investigation done. You have not done anything within the last three months. Nothing done. Again, he was not treated very pleasantly. He to get out and went to his home. Now, during lunch time, that elderly gentleman has come back. He was shouting. You, have you passed MBBS? Tito meekly said, yes. You are saying that there is tuberculosis in my family? Have you not learnt anything? Do you know what a gentleman is? Do you know my family? My ancestral family? You are sounding like anything. How do you dare say tuberculosis in my family? Tito couldn't do anything. Just meekly because he, he claimed that he was father's friend. So Tito said, okay. You do whatever you like, but again, Tito tried to intervene. Sir, please try to understand. This is very serious. One of your daughters have died. This may die any time. Please take action. Don't bother. You go out, irresponsible fellow. Tito went back to his 24 into 7 duty. Kolkata, the biggest premier government institution in Kolkata. He was constantly busy there. And forgot the whole episode. The elderly gentleman, the Koila Kaku, the cool uncle, did, he didn't forget. He said, I will teach a lesson to this bad things about me. Actually, not good things. I cannot utter here. I teach a lesson to this. So what he did? He communicated with his son-in-law, who is a real estate agent in South Calcutta. You see, these doctors of Belut, they are uneducated, arrogant. So just arrange to get some best doctor advice from Kolkata. That real estate agent fellow said, yes, I am in South Kolkata. Unfortunately or unfortunately, the health minister held from South Kolkata at that time. So he communicated with the health minister. But again, a real estate agent cannot reach to the health minister, isn't it? So he tried to get the CA, confidential assistant or PA, something like that. And after several communications, he got a time from the CA or PA to the health minister to meet him. And they are really very efficient people. He could not meet the health minister, but got a letter from the CA of the health minister that this is very close to us. He works for our party. So please make him see the patient to the best doctor of Kolkata. Now who is the best doctor of Kolkata? Naturally it would be the head of the department of the best department in Kolkata. So they selected IPGMER commonly known as SSKM Hospital Kolkata. But again such a VIP like head of the department of this department of SSKM Hospital, by common knowledge, should not be accessible to anybody. So, with the letter, he came to the superintendent super of SSKM Hospital. Another round of talks there. Then the super wrote a very benign letter to the head of the department of chest medicine, IPGM and SSKM, that this is a lady who is suffering a lot, please do something. As you now understand by this time, Tirtho was very busy in his OPD as the head of the department of chest medicine, IPG Mayor Kolkata. And the moment the person entered in his clinic, he understood the whole thing. And it was a rush, frantic rush because the Gal was almost gasping that time. And there was no investigation done. And now it has to be ours. It is no more third person now. Ours was a protocol that all house staffs, doctors should be ready to carry the stretcher. Not necessarily you can't wait for the GDA. So immediately four house staffs took the girl in the stretcher, ran to the X-ray department, did X-ray, 
it was miliary tuberculosis. For those who are not doctors, miliary, the name comes from millet seeds. They are seeds like this. It is disseminated disease, tuberculosis. The girl was on the last gasp of her life. Fortunately enough, we could intervene, admit it, hospitalize, and fortunately got very well. And to complete the story, at the time of discharge, he had brought a very big sweet pack to be distributed to all of us. A little going back. Just last December, I had gone to, actually after 50 years, homecoming, I went to Devani. I didn't go there in the last 50 years. And probably Raja and others know this. I was not a regular in their alumni meet every year. So this time, I had a talk with the Secretary Moraj, CCTV TV installation in Vidabit campus. And I opted for it. Yes, sir. sir. Let me give, give, please give me the chance. I will sponsor this project. CCTV installation in Vidabit campus. And then, if you think I was congratulated, it is not true. I was admonished by my friends, Buddha and others, that what you would do if you had a CCTV in the campus at your time. Exactly. And I fully agree with this. Practically, we were very naughty boys. Very naughty boys. Most of the boys in our class were good in classes as all of the PWP students are. Most of them have some extracurricular activities, including fellow like me, but all were very naughty. And I particularly remember for channeling us to something constructive, there was our physics teacher, Badolda. I don't remember the name. Do you remember the name, Badolda? Physics ah, teacher. 100%. He was the, 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 he was the best the, physics teacher that we had. What is the I good name? I, good name, I don't remember. Good name, I don't remember. Badolda, he was known as Badolda. Okay. But again, what happened? Badal that taught me something else as well. Badal that taught me else as well. Badal that was a pure bohemian in his attitude. And we at that age were very much attracted to his way of life. And we idealized bohemianism. So when I completed uh, RKM and came to Kolkata, Archikar Medical College, we have imbibed the total Bohemian attitude. We are total Bohemians. There was no discipline in our life. And at the same time, there was the Noxal movement going on, full-fledged Noxal movement. And Archikar was the hub. So for five years course, we did seven years and then we gave every exam thrice. That means first MBBS, second MBBS, final MBBS. These big exams, all we gave thrice. Then we came out of the course. We started and Archikor, you have to see to believe the patient load. Patients are flying over your head all sides every time. And we become very good, very good in attending patients. And after six months, we realized that we are just doing manual duties. That means a patient comes, immediately one IV line, one rice tube, one oxygen, prop up, send for blood. We are very good at them. But after six months of this, Huge patient load delay. Some of our friends, and I remember one of them was Debangsu Sarkar from Barakpur. We all discussed that we are not getting any diagnosis. We don't know what the patient is really suffering from. We are treating the ailments. We are not treating the disease. So, somebody else told me the way my character was actually total bohemian probably a bit arrogant. 
So somebody told me there is only one person who can fix you and bring you to the track. He said, Devabrata said. I decided immediately, I am very impulsive in nature. So I decided immediately that I will ship to SSKM Hospital, IPGM, Institute of Postgraduate Medical Education and Research, where I worked till late to go to Devabrata said. And the next chapter of my life starts from here. I came to Devabrata Sen in a July morning. It was raining. And I went inside. Again, lots of patients. A person with broad shoulders. And always, Devabrata Sen never looked like this. He was always looking like this. Always his head high, something like this. Broad shoulder, head high. And we went there and started the next phase. And there we learned every time now the tricks of the trade that what is the diagnosis. Whenever a patient comes, the ultimate question is what is your diagnosis? And non doctors will not believe this. This is not the case in most of the patients. So we started there. From here, say the OPD would have continued from 9 a.m. in the morning to 5 p.m. in the evening. We didn't get any lunch. There was no lunch time for us. So our lunch was after 5 p.m. And many of the our colleagues suffered from peptic ulcer at that time. But again, sir would not listen to anything like that. At 4 p.m., one of our old acquaintances enters into the OPD. Sir, this boy is suffering from this, 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 this. And no hesitation. Sir immediately calls the patient, please sit in. We have no hurry. Mind it, at 5 p.m. in the OPD, since 9 a.m., he says, I, even in night 10 p.m., we are not in a hurry. There is no hurry. Please take your time and please tell us your story. The story starts. Listen to the story. The boy is a, something 18 to 20 years of age. He was playing football a few months back and probably the football had hit his nose at some time. He was not very aware of that. Probably, this is a retrospect thinking, but probably a football hit on the neck. Since then, he is having nosebleed at times, say weeks or months interval. Okay. Few months passed. ENT people have seen. They said nothing serious. Then suddenly, throughout the last few days, he cannot see in his left eye. He cannot see in his left eye. They went to eye surgeon. Eye surgeon referred him to neurologist. A neurologist diagnosed there is a disease known as multiple sclerosis. Who knows that? That probably it's a variant of multiple sclerosis. Starting with eye, the patient cannot see in the eye. Retrobulbar neuritis. That is the diagnosis. All together they have come. Sir is sitting here, very re relaxed at the time of five, no lunch, no breakfast, nothing, whatever you have done, you have done before nine. And he turns to me and says, now see Alok, how they have missed the diagnosis. He has the diagnosis. He diagnoses that basically there is a carcinoma inside, nasopharyngeal carcinoma. This football hit is a hind thought. The nose bleeding is the source of that there is something inside and there is compression of the optic nerve causing this complete loss of vision. All this, just like a detective, he would dissect one after the another and finally get to the diagnosis. So practically, Devabrata Singh changed our way of seeing things and What we learned is all doctors are basically detectives and every patient is a story. 
But like any detective, you have two layers. One is don't paint too official. That means any doctor, don't be up too official, socket, one day, anything smart. Patient will not be open to you. So superficially, you have to go to the level of the patient at the same level so that the patient takes you into confidence. But internally, you are deliberating his every move. Actually, we don't diagnose by investigations. We diagnose by history taking. And history starts when the patient enters here. The patient is entering in the room. Patient does not talk by mouth alone. He talks with his whole body. The patient enters and I am starting to read it. How does he talk? How does he work? How does it get in? And small talks, unnecessary talks. Well, you are from Belur. Have you ever gone to Belur what? Okay, is it not very congested there right now? Just engage him in small talks. Take him aside from his complaints. And that brings the real problem in him. He will come to this later. So this mode of deduction, all we learned there, and it changed the whole course. Now onwards, a little struggle history. I loved the Vaprathasim. And then it was a folly on my part, according to my colleagues. Because I choose, I had options. Medicine, that means internal medicine, and respiratory medicine, that is pulmonology. And then I chose, I love the Vaprathasim, so I love respiratory medicine. I opted for respiratory medicine. All my colleagues said, are you mad? This are you mad term I have heard several times in my life. Okay, I am mad. Started respiratory medicine. A bit the national scenario that time. When India became independent in 1947, it has the biggest enemy in a disease that was tuberculosis. And India was practically very unprepared, like this time, Israel unprepared for this Hamas attack, something like that. So they quickly developed a dedicated specialty to tackle the menace of tuberculosis. And that's why initially the stream, the specialty I opted was known as respiratory medicine and tuberculosis. But with the advent of time, Tuberculosis was conquered, but the stigma stayed there. Most of the bright boys now, in the last five years, are all coming to pulmonary medicine. But most of the bright boys in 1970, 75, 80, did not opt for pulmonary medicine. I did. And when I opted for pulmonary medicine, against the wishes of all my well wishers, I saw another thing there, the degree, the MD, Doctor of Medicine degree in respiratory medicine was not recognized by Medical Council of India. Why is it so? Calcutta University had the oldest department of respiratory medicine in Kolkata, but it was not recognized by Medical Council of India which was much younger in existence. Why? Very astonishing, I share with you. Calcutta University did not apply for. Our predecessors were such that they thought, I am doing the things. I don't look for recognition. I now personally feel that was a folly. They said, we don't look for recognition. You have to get recognition. Otherwise, our students were not getting jobs outside. So I started for recognition of MD degree in tuberculosis, HSD, this Calcutta University. It was a Herculean task. And most of the resistance came from within. Our teachers, our seniors, they all felt that they are good enough, they are busy enough, very okay. busy practice, they are famous enough, and they did not look for recognition. Recognition was needed for future generation, and lot of paraphernalia, official work. Ultimately, there was a check has to be signed to the tune of 50,000 to the Medical Council of India. That time, it may be something very much right now. 
when I tried for this, it was obstructed by the authorities. Why? Because there was internal squabble between two departments. Fortunately, every time we are fortunate, why? We are patients at the right places. Fortunately, we had a patient there in the audit department. He called someone. They, he called another one. And we got the check so that I got the check in the last date. I had to rush to the airport that time, mind it long back. In my own pocket money, I ran to Delhi. I met there in the last date to the MCI office, putting the check, sir, here is the check. Please arrange for inspection. For inspection, we have to bring one person, we have to go to another state to bring the inspector from there. Have him seen the department and when he saw the department, he was astonished. His own department was not that developed as we were in Kolkata. His department was recognized. We were not because we didn't try for recognition. Okay. But when during this AMD degree recognition, I understood that we need an association. So we collected all the respective practitioners, juniors, seniors, and fortunately again, it was not the seniors, the juniors who came all together. And then we started the journey of Association of Chess West Bengal and Indian Chess Society. I am the past president of Indian Chess Society as well. Rolled by. Now, I will, how much time we have? Okay, we have some time left. A little about what I was saying. On the long run, recently there was a squabble because there was this zero percentile thing in medical curricula that was taken many one by storm. How is this? How do you allow everyone to be a doctor? Now the thing is, Zero percentile does not mean zero. I am not going there. But again, what it takes to be a doctor. Frequently we have learned, because say, in my household, we have a very big family. I was targeted to be a doctor because, because of my mother's wish. That the, always the doctor is the local celebrity. The local person who has a car, who is revered by everybody, who is invited everywhere, is the local doctor. That was the standard middle class mentality. My mother wanted her son to be a doctor. My father, he was a literary person and I have some genes from him. He wanted to be make me English literature enthusiast. Ultimately, I from English literature, I went to medical and my close friend, Gautam Sengupto, from medical, went to English literature. Things are like that. But again, what it takes to be a doctor? Actually, it is not the IQ. It is not the IQ. Practically, when we just enter into the medical curriculum, what is baffling is the volume. The volume is enormous. The medical curriculum volume is enormous. But if you think of the concept, I personally feel there are much more difficult concepts in mathematics or even philosophy or even literature. So in medical curriculum, what it needs is determination and determination leads to dedication. IQ, of course everybody should have an IQ to the tune that everybody understands. But there is another thing that is known as EQ. That means, I think as I remember, Soto Nadella once utilized this term, EQ, emotional intelligence. So a doctor needs standard IQ, IQ probably to the tune of 120, 125, something like that. But EQ, emotional intelligence, understanding his surroundings, understanding 
the patient. I have some time more, yes. Just another story. That time, it is now no more Tirtha business, it is me. I was working as a registrar at the Department of Chinese Medicine under Professor Devoproto Sen. And again, he had no respite for anything. No lunch, no dinner doesn't matter, no sleep doesn't matter. Everything has to be done there and there. And again, we could not even look up. We have to look straight always. And every time, practically we didn't work. We have to be something like this, ready for her. I was very busy. Sir was sitting just beside her. With smiling eyes. Kissing face with smiling eyes. Priya or Vana. Okay. So, Devabrata Sen was sitting on the other side. Am I audible? Buddha? Yes, yes. You are audible. Devabrata Sen sitting on the other side. And it was around about 2.30, something like that. Suddenly, the door opened, blasted. There was a stretcher carrying a young lady, almost gasping again like the previous one. And what these fellows do, they came in, put the stretcher there, and then ran out ran out. That means I am left with a gasping patient, a young lady probably in the age of 28, 30. Nobody to take care of her because they had entered, that kept the lady and ran out. Opposite side, sir, they were the same, was sitting. He just looked at me like this and then started writing his prescription. That means you manage it and I will see how good you are in managing the situation. Almost something like situational leadership, something like that. I am not very smart at that. But what I have to do? The patient is gasping. So again, doctors, GDS come later. Doctors come first. Just carry the stage and go up. Start the treatment. Fluid, oxygen, prop up, etc, etc, etc. And then came the reality, I am in charge of admission, who will admit the patient? This is a government institution. And so, everything has to be accounted for. Did anybody come with the lady? Then I discovered the mother accompanied her. She was also very emaciated. The mother accompanied her. She was just crying with her heads down at the corner and all others have played. So what to do? There was a provision in our capacity, GE free. GE free means grave emergency free. That means I can make a person free for 48 hours so that he is taken care of. And then he has to pay the bill. Okay. The daughter was admitted GE free and I sent the papers upstairs because they could not work without the papers to have the documents. And then I discovered the mother has nowhere to go. They have come from a very distant rural village in North Bengal. The mother even does not know where has he come from. So, who will take care of the mother? Okay, nobody there. She does not know Kolkata. So, okay, another G free, grave emergency free. Both of them admitted, the mother and the daughter. They got well. The mother was just suffering from malnutrition. The girl was suffering from pneumonia and other ailments. They got well within few days. The problem started there. Because there was no one to take care of them. GP quota has finished. Now they are getting, getting payment dues every day. Every day it was cropping up, the dues. And after, say, around three weeks, it was a huge amount for them. They cannot pay this. What I am going to do with these two ladies? They are well now. They are ready to be discharged. They don't know where to go. And they don't have any money to pay the government dues. I called the, who is this called? Wardmaster. Called the wardmaster and told him, just so, just think of this. Just so them absconding. Just so them absconding. I advise them, the wardmaster, just tell the ladies, to take their luggages, whatever they have, and to go out. And you saw them absconder, so that we don't have to pay anything, they don't have to pay anything. 
they went out. Absconders ideally should be tracked by the police. This is government set up. Nobody tracks them. So they went out and we are all happy. We have done some good job. After a few weeks, there was a strike. All Bengal strike of the doctors. We joined. Everyone joined. We also joined. And we were seeing patients just outside the OPD department. Just outside the OPD department, we took tables, benches, and we started seeing patients. And then government tried to break the strike. So they used to bring patients who used to tell in front of the media. That time TV was not there, papers were there. In front of the media, that the doctors are bad, they don't see us, etc., etc., etc. Nobody was willing to tell against us. They are all our patients. Then ultimately on the third day, they brought two ladies. And we recognized them. These are the two ladies whom we sort of absconded in our ledger. They said in front of the media that these doctors are very bad. They don't see patients. They used not to attend us when we are admitted. They did not give us feet, etc., 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 long list. And it was published in the media the next day, all over. See the behavior of doctors, what they are doing to poor patients. The strike went off. Everything was normal. This is real life. After three months, again, the same two ladies, same ill. This time again, the girl gasping, nothing doing, sad again on the other side, just looked at me like this and started, okay, run, G free, G free again for the daughter who reported against us. So these are the stories. Now, I'll get back to our, my thing that what I have learned over the years now, again, my struggles, etc., should not be that much dealt with here. We did the MD degree recognition, we did the association, we did the DM degree recognition, and also the respiratory care unit. We have done many things, but this is part of the process. What I feel now is my unabashed love for my profession. I have seen many intelligent people, very elderly doctors, some cynic, some pessimistic. I still feel this is one of the best options in the third world and probably in all the worlds. But again, what matters is the patient. And what matters is how do you communicate with the patient. So whenever the patient comes, the story starts. And also there's one thing. Ilchena does not fit in. We are very in on this clue. Everything, everything, everything. This is like a detective story. Something does not fit in. And that gives us clue to get IOC. It is not the IQ, it is, but it is the EQ, the emotional intelligence, the sharing with the patient. That gives us our goal. And I wake up every day with expectation of something exciting the next day. Some new story some new patient, and some new experience. I'll stop here if you have some questions, anything, Buddhadev, anything, or others, whoever. Thank you. Uh, Buddhadev, you can unmute yourself. You are not audible. Buddha, Sonaya Chana. See, Alok has uh, very, uh, I mean, I, I would say very judiciously avoided uh, projecting himself as well as, uh, uh, I mean, his, his expertise and knowledge in the field of pulmonology. But what he has done is very well known to us uh, that I said in my, uh, in my introduction of him,
he's a master clinician and uh, well how he became a master clinician the journey he has definitely explained uh, definitely the guidance that he got from his i mean i will say godfather uh, and imbibed his qualities and 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 mane mane he has developed on this is a uh, is an example in itself is an example for his students who all revere him i know personally uh, he's a good man he's a i mean i'm mean, proud to be uh, associated with him and i'm proud to proud to announce myself his classmate his batchmate and well we spent lots of years together in vidyapeet ha we were dustus but then but then probably as because we are dustus uh, we uh, we we did uh, something in our own right and uh, and we are now where we are so i will thank alok again for his uh, this uh, this sharing of his experiences with us and i think this dedication and this emotional question that that he has mentioned is applicable for all professions we all should be not just bookish we should be uh, in our we should be more emotional in our approach we should be what we have learned in vidyapeet what we have imbibed in vidyapeet uh, man of uh, all weathers thank you very much alok and the and the audience little actually i did not dwell with this extremely professional things the research work in pulmonology and other things for example putra said that i have 225 publications in national and international that is honestly an understatement definitely at least many more i even don't keep count of them but ultimately it is part of the process whenever you do anything there are questions cropping up to you and that is the source of research i have innumerable students all over the globe they are very good researchers probably better than me but i always taught them only one thing don't look for questions in the sky you have daily experiences and questions cropping up and do research on them and we have many many laurels all over the throughout our career but what really matters is whether we can continue this to our future new generations and i am happy to say we are doing that very successfully Uh, hello the i have uh, two questions uh, uh, so first of all the, so this uh, research in medicine uh, so what i see is that there is uh, some research that happens in large hospitals in india but say somebody who tra- who practices uh, in a small town uh, most of the time doctors don't have time or maybe the motivation to do research in medicine so that is one thing that i think india needs to work on so uh given that you have ex- you have had time and motivation to do so so how do the young doctors coming out of college actually uh, get, uh, develop that uh, motivation and habit to actually continue their research beyond college during their practice years and let me answer, let, let me answer this first it is the motivation that matters time comes automatically when you love anything you don't feel sort of time to do that it's an excuse what matters is motivation and also there is no scope of negative thinking i just right now said take research questions from your own surroundings for example you are working in very rural some india just turn there what is the principal element suffering they are and also this is to explain that even if you look for data you will see very poultry data particularly from india why don't you gather this data research does not mean it has to be rocket science gathering preliminary data answering basic questions that crop up in our life for example do you know this oral rehydration solution oris was held at the greatest discovery of the 20th century just keep sugar and salt and water together and this will take care of thousands prevent thousands of deaths so simple so elegant so probably what hampers research is lack of mindset what needs is motivation not time
not even money. And those who are very busy, why why should they go for research? That you can ask for. Why should they go for research when they are very busy? I will tell you, who are very busy in seeing patients, 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 they don't gather new knowledge. They will have frustration in long run. When you have research question opening up to you every day, you leave for the next day to go for the next question to answer. So please, everybody who is listening to this, imbibe in research. Even if you are not taking research as a primary career, research can be taken as a primary career even in medicine without practice. But again, all medical practitioners should have some research questions in their mind and should be ready to answer them in his lifetime. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. And one more question. So in one of the stories that you told uh, told today that uh, in this, what happens that people uh, at times ignore the initial symptoms and they try to go for symptomatic relief there rather than uh, going in, into the actual diagnosis of the disease. So what my experience is that uh, especially in smaller towns, what happens is doctors are also a bit... Uh, uh, doctors also try to avoid going for too many tests that would actually give them the actual di diagnosis because then patients would hop on from one doctor to another uh, saying that this uh, So for those doctors that are working in such an environment where maybe patients are uh, economically constrained to actually go for a lot of tests, how do you, in a, in, a gov, in a government setup, actually the tests are maybe not so uh, costly, so you can actually get all the tests, tests done. But how do you convince a poor patient to actually uh, go for so many tests and that leads you to the actual diagnosis? Actually, I will be a bit transparent here. There is a general feeling among the public that doctors write unnecessary tests. This is usually not true. Every doctor wants a diagnosis. Someone will be more capable with his instinct, with his IQ, with his training to diagnose it from the symptoms itself. Some doctors will need further investigations. But investigations are also scientific approach. Don't blame investigations. Whether it is balanced or not, what I mean, a patient comes with fever. Just think of this. A patient comes with fever. Now I am in Kolkata. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? It will be dengue. I don't know whether it is in Delhi or other thing. It will be dengue. Why do you think so? This is known as pretest probability. There is a theory, Bayesian theory, bias. It is not bias, bias, B-A-Y-E-S, Bayesian theory. That means if you see in the zoo a big tail and then trunk and everything, this is most likely to be an elephant. That means pretest probability. Anybody having fever during the COVID epidemic was most likely suffering from COVID. So this is known as pretest probability. All the investigations are done according to pretest probability. I'll tell you one story. There was a round side shadow in the lung. The patient was residing in New York. And the doctor there said, immediately go for surgery. This is malignancy, cancer. The patient came back to Kolkata, showed me. I said, no, this does not look like malignancy. Probably tuberculosis. Have a external biopsy done. We can do this very easily. Now with it. And he was diagnosed to be tuberculosis. The New York doctor has not seen tuberculosis in his life. He does not know tuberculosis. I have seen so many tuberculosis that I am a bit biased in diagnosing tuberculosis rather than lung carcinoma. So pretest probability is something which is always considered before diagnosis. And again, I reiterate, 90% of the diagnosis is done by before doing investigation. 10% or 15% needs investigation further. And again, these things that particularly in a say periphery, busy suburb periphery, one doctor is doing these things and other doctors are writing investigations. Just see what happens in few months or years. Patients are not fools. They never go away. This is my, I can say, what is a dictum. 
patients never turn away from you. Patients never go away. They may be biased, they may be even angry. Who knows? My patients sometimes become very angry with me. They never go away. They all come back because they know where is the answer. And again, the answer is patient has come with fever. Should I write diagnosis as fever? No. Even the patient has come fluid in the chest. Should I write diagnosis as fluid? No. What is the cause? The diagnosis. That is the practice of medicine. Uh, thank you. Uh, any other uh, question from any other member, please? Uh, if you have, please go ahead. What is written in the chat? Anybody written in the chat? Uh, Manish Priyadarshida has written. Thank you. Uh, he has thanked for uh, the session. Uh, so thanks everybody. Are we through? Uh -huh. In case in nobody, no one has any further questions, then I think uh, we can close the session. Uh, so okay. Number one, I thank the, our Bidabit Akhtari brothers. All of them are probably junior, excepting a few. There is one dada in Kolkata, doctor, who is senior to us. But all our, I see Subir, I see Nataraj, and our friends from all over India. So thank you, everybody. This is a good Sarudhiya Sanmelan for us. There was a bad news, just demise of one of our brothers before we started this. But again, India has won against Pakistan yesterday evening. So this is Saradiya Pri Puja. Puja greetings and Saradiya greetings to you all. Satam. And there was one uh, Rites also, isn't it? So you all made this possible. And I am really indebted to you to make me here come, come home. And again, as you know, a doctor's life is a long story. I have not discussed my research things and other things here. But these, I think, more important, interested to share compared to my academic achievements. Thank you all for joining. Thank you. Thank you, Alokda, and thank you, Buddha Devda, uh, for your time. Buddha, okay, thank you.